Hi, this is the Professional Amateur Hour coming to you with another review. This week I checked out The Final Sanction. And this 1990 film was directed by David Pryor and stars Ted Pryor, Robert Zadar, and William Smith, among others of course. The story of this movie is that Russia has launched a nuclear missile and actually destroyed an American city. But instead of going into all-out war, the two countries decide to do the final sanction, which is where instead of you know an all-out war, they're just going to have a war with one person versus one person. So they both get to choose one man and then they go into the woods and try to kill each other. The winning country would, I guess, win the world? But what will happen exactly? Well for that, you gotta watch the movie and find out. Alright, so let's discuss this movie. Well, I gotta say that this movie was a ton of fun. I was actually laughing at it the whole time. I really didn't stop like chuckling to myself for most of the movie. And this movie does remind me of other, you know, so bad they're good movies. I think there's one, was it called Robo Wars or Robo Jocks, where they have a similar kind of situation where instead of doing wars, they just have this one big fight. With this one, it's not with robots, it's just with one guy. So it's like a super kind of simple movie that way. And with this one, you do get into the fight quite early too, like after like 40 minutes of this, you know, hour and a half movie. And so most of it is this fight in the woods. And I don't know, it's just so funny. There's so many different funny things that happen in this one. And yeah, let's talk about those things. So what are some of these things? Well, there's a bunch, like right from the beginning, they have to, you know, choose a contestant for the American side. And it seems like they just kind of like pull this guy out of prison. Like he's in some prison and you're just like, is this like the best fight or anything? He doesn't even like win the first fight that you see him in, um, in the prison. And so you're just like, what is the going on? Like, why would you choose this guy out of, you know, all Americans? But, you know, they do. I think it's explained a way where it's like a military prison. So maybe he had like killed his squad mates or at least, you know, is convicted of that. And so it's really kind of random choices. And then the American contestant is Robert Zadar. And I just love seeing him in any B movie. He is an actor. If you don't know him, he's got a big face in this one. And he gets quite a bit of screen time. So I, I just like, you know, seeing him. And we're going to talk about the crazy things he does as well. But his training is like really ridiculous. They just like pump him with drugs. And then he like sees the sergeant telling him to unalive himself and so it is just really random how it's kind of all done as well because the the sergeant is like standing in the room and he has like no idea what's going on in his mind and you get to see it and you're just like this is crazy they also have some computer graphics of course 1990 you know computer graphics you know was not the best but they don't make sense the scale that they're using is all off and it makes no sense Things aren't labeled, things are just doing stuff. And so it's a really kind of weird thing. Like every time you see these graphics, you are just lost. So you just kind of laugh at it. Like, how can you get this part wrong? So there's so many things in this movie that make for a funny watch if you, you know, enjoy laughing at that type of stuff. And another thing that I just burst out laughing every time it happened was Robert Zadar's character. He has like a specialty weapon, and that specialty weapon is like a little shovel. I'm not even joking about that. And it, and it collapses too. So he like whips it out and it like unfolds and then he throws it and it hits like bullseye every time. And then he does it like throughout the whole thing. And like every time, I don't know, I kind of forgot that he was throwing this shovel because they're using guns and grenades and stuff. And so when he just whips out this shovel and, and throws it, it is unbelievable sometimes where you just have to laugh at it. So it is really funny. I'll clip it in here. And so anytime he whips it out, I just burst out laughing. I couldn't believe it. And then even like I would forget that it was his main weapon. So then when it whipped out again, I just burst out laughing again. So there's lots of stuff with his character just alone that makes it for a fun time. And that brings me to what doesn't work with this film. Well, like I said, it's all bad. Like, and nothing is really good in this one. But that's what I loved about it. I absolutely love that type of really corny acting, that corny sets, corny action. It's really fun that way to me. 
it kind of seems like someone watched the movie Robot Jocks, which is a movie where instead of fighting wars, all countries kind of decide wars with a one-on-one -on -one giant robot fight. And so they kind of took that idea and said, what if we did the same thing, but with just guys on the ground? And then they kind of ran with it. So it's one of those things where it's just so bad it's good that I just had a blast with it. And if I had to pick one thing that was probably the worst, it was the music, I gotta say. It's just like really old video game music. Like if you know any kind of Sega games, there's a bunch out there. What is it? Outrun 2019 or Dinosaurs with Machine Guns. These are the games that I used to play as, as a child. And so it just reminded me of that. It's that kind of that very kind of 32-bit music going on. And it goes on for a while, right? And so it is quite noticeable sometimes. It's not always the worst, but it certainly allows you to have many different things going on in you know your internal monologue while you're watching this type of stuff. So that the engagement level with me in this one, I thought was just so good. And I really did have a blast with this one. As for my recommendation, well, I gotta say, if you're a bad movie fan, this is something you gotta check out. I really do recommend it. I even watched like another Robert Sadar movie because I enjoyed this one so much. It was Killing America style. And I would say out of those two, I enjoyed this one more. So do certainly consider pressing play on this one. You can find it on Tubi. And as for a score, well, of course, I'm going to give it the good bad score of 4.5. I'm also going to give it a shadow score on the, you know, good, bad scale rating. And I would say it's an eight. It's just so funny, just so bad in so many different ways that you can't help but enjoy yourself. And with that being said, I think that's all I wanted to say. So like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.